All right, howdy folks, it's uh, Dave Tyner, and today I'm going to be showing you how to implement uh, the Point Cloud plugin for a Max Interactive Project uh, 2.0.114. So um, go ahead and open up the VR Point Clouds uh, project that you downloaded, and um, you're going to get errors probably, definitely, that say you can't find the plugin, of course. So we have to, um, we have to put that in. So step one here is we have to go to our plugin manager and load the plugin. So open up the plugin manager, click add plugin, find where your point cloud plugin is. It's in that zip, fo uh, zip file that you downloaded and it's right here, point cloud stingray plugin. All right, so click that, still might error, that's fine. Um, so then what you wanna do is open up the recap DLL folder, copy all the DLLs, Paste them into your C program files, Autodesk, 3ds Max, Interactive, your version, Engine, Win64, Dev. Um, this should work in Stingray 1.9 too. So if you're uh, using that, you can do that. Anyway, dump it in there. Do not overwrite. Say no to overwriting, and that'll be good. Incidentally, you're also going to have to do that after you deploy. So you'll have to put uh, all these DLLs in the same Win64 Dev folder of your um, your deployed scene. Uh, all right, so once you do that, everything should be honky-dory with the editor, and then uh, just press Control F6 to bounce the engine and bring it back. Um, so part, just three of this, uh, is this external pointclouds.csv folder. In this, uh, sorry, file. And this file contains all of the um, information for the point clouds you want to load. patient, my friend Andrew Grant, who I like a lot. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, all right. So here it is. Name. Arbitrary. Doesn't matter. Can be anything. We were going to use it, but no, we're not. Um, and then, of course, the path to the file, and then, of course, the file name and extension. The point size, fade out distance, skip point count and scale. Um, kind of self-explanatory, fade out distance, maybe not. So that's in meters around you. That's going to be, you know, how far the points render around you. And that is to save, um, you know, if you don't have a great video card, uh, you should have a great video card, or at least a good one if you're using VR, but uh, depending on how good it is will depend on that fade out distance, I used to think. However, now I've found that if I increase it so it encompasses the whole thing, and if I scale it down to, um, it's easier to encompass the whole thing, but it all loads onto the buffer and then it, it performs really, really well. Um, you're probably gonna have to play with the scale and the point size a little bit, but um, it, it uh, yeah, it's just, just recently discovered, like it performs pretty good. So um, definitely something to check out. And uh, the more you scale it down, the, uh, the, smaller the space in between each point gets. So you can increase the point size just a little bit and um, uh, and then skip a bunch of them and you still get a, a pretty good representation of the model. It's not perfect. I mean, you can tell it's a point cloud, right? It's not like it's a mesh that you have, you know, you can't really tell. But as you can see from some of the example videos, um, it's definitely good enough. All right, so just play with those and um, you got this list queued up and you should be able to iterate through it with uh, the pressing of the controller um, in the level change mode. Okay, so once you have this in your C temp point clouds uh, directory, point clouds.csv, um, you, can, you can change this. So if you go to your script menu, Lua, and just, I guess, Tools, Tools, Point Cloud. You can open it up in here, but I always, um, I, I like to use an external editor myself. So this Tools, Point Cloud is what you're looking for. And hey, look at that. On line 156, this is the path to the CSV file. You can just change that to whatever you want. Just make sure to include the double whack for the um, file name, or you can also go forward slashes. That works too, a single forward slash. Um, okay, 
so once all those are in alignment, then um, everything should be pretty uh, straightforward. Just press the button. Uh, the run project, not play, run project. OK, so you can see these red boxes everywhere. So that means that the points are still rendering. And you can see the performance is pretty bad while that's happening. Uh, but as soon as it's, all the points are done rendering, yeah, and that's what I was talking about before. Like, is if you if you get the whole cloud in there, um, and all these points, then when you teleport, there's no extra work that has to be done because everything's already in memory. Um, and then if you want to get rid of these boxes out in the distance, just press the space bar. Okay, and those will toggle those on and off. And uh, yeah, I mean that's about it. I think um, I covered the usage, like what I'll. What are the blah, what the controls are in another video? So if I bring that there, then maybe maybe a fella just goes to his channel and looks at his videos to find the one. It's going to be this one: Enterprise VR, Point Clouds, and VR. Yes. Uh, so this talks about what the controls do. Okay. Controls aren't amazing. I know this, uh, but you know we're also not developing this anymore, at least short term. So in any case, there you go. And um, good luck. Let us know how it uh, how it works out. And um, yeah, anxious to hear how you uh, how you're using this. So please let us know. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later.